I got this short question from Jessica and it's about uh, emotional needs. And Jessica's question is, I don't know what my needs are. I don't know what I want. Where do I begin to work on bringing some clarity to find out what my needs are? So it's a great question. And um, first of all, to Jessica or anybody else watching this, I want you to give yourself a break because knowing what you want, it's a, very important. What you need is important. But you know, we're not very good at it. None of us are actually very good at this, knowing what our needs are, because it's a very, very complicated matter. Not impossible though, and there's ways to go about it. So that's the first thing to note. None of us are great at this. None of us actually ever perfect this, knowing what our needs are. So what we want to do is bring a kind of a lightness to this, an acknowledgement that, if, yeah, there are, there are needs, um, I'm not really good at knowing what they are and I'm not really good at knowing how to meet them specifically, what that might entail. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good at sitting down and analyzing and figuring that out by myself. Okay, none of us are. So the first thing is to, to sort of some stillness and some releasing and letting go of needing to figure all this out by ourselves and to invite your higher mind in to be your guide and to be kind of like a, what's the way to say this? Kind of like the, the, uh, the executive who's going to sort of take on a lot of this for you in terms of identifying what your needs are and making sure that they're met and balanced. Now, that is a starting point. Okay, that's the most fundamental thing, is to let go of control of how the needs need to be met. Not to deny them, not to repress them, but to let go of control and to realize, I'm going to need a new guidance system here. I'm going to need a new uh, chief executive to run this operation because none of us are very good at this. Now, over time and through that practice of stillness and inviting your higher mind in, your higher self, you will begin to get sort of better ideas about what your needs are. And that's so much better because um, life is not a lot of fun when we don't know what our needs are. We're completely blind to it and we're taking this sort of um, scattergun approach to hopefully you know, trying different things and something will stick and something will meet a need and I'll feel more balanced. So the scattergun approach isn't very good. So over time, through that invitation, you'll begin to know more consciously what it is that your needs are. You don't need to know perfectly what they are, but you'll get a, a general sense of what seems to meet needs for us. Even that conscious awareness of it isn't essential if we fully give up control to our higher mind, but you will develop that over time. So ultimately, with that new guidance system, what you'll find is that you'll notice balance is coming. So we are human beings, we are complicated, we are whole. Every one aspect of my life influences all other aspects of my life. So what we're looking for is meeting needs in a way that is balanced, that it's not off balance, okay? So that means, let's say for instance, you have five needs. Now I use a model of five basic needs that I've developed over time. And the idea is that in meeting needs, we do need that higher mind uh, to guide this because it's not easy. But what, what the higher mind will, will do is it will find a way to balance needs, to treat you as a complete human being who all these needs interact with each other and will therefore need to be kept within balance. So that's one thing we are looking for with these needs. When we're in the small egoic mind of trying to control it and figure it all out by ourselves, what tends to happen is, let's say there are five needs. These needs are actually seen as being in competition with one another. And therefore you're gonna have all vying for time and attention and energy and they're gonna resent each other and, and everything else. So when you are getting in touch with your higher mind and that stillness and that influence, it's going to be seeing these as not in competition, but actually complementary, all part of the same one system. So we're looking for 
balance with this. Now, when you start to find ways to meet your needs, okay, you, this is another important point, but why we're not so good at meeting them and maintaining that balance is, well, the higher mind might influence you into two, let's say, and in a given day, this is what is required here to meet our needs. Now, your higher mind is never going to force you. It's never going to bully you. It's never going to ask you to do something you can't do. It's going to <clears throat> encourage you to do things that are easy and achievable. And it might give you a way to do it. And you'll have this realization, oh my God, that worked. But the problem then becomes, well, that's the way it's going to be from now on. Every single day it needs to be exactly the way it was today because that worked. And that's problematic because we kind of stubbornly stick to overly rigid formulas in terms of, well, what a routine looks like in terms of meeting a need. And the problem with that is none of those rigid structures or routines will hold up. It's an inevitability that they will break down. Why is that? Well, life situations can come up and uh, all sorts of things will happen. Not to mention the fact that your needs will fluctuate and change and vary. So any system that you develop to meet your needs, self-parenting kind of thing, approach or strategy, will work, but will never work permanently. So one of the issues we have to look at is I can't be too rigid and stick into how I'm doing this. Which brings me to my next point, which is, well, okay, if I can't stick rigidly to a system and meet my needs, what do I need? Well, what we need is the practice of attunement regularly to what's happening within that system of needs. So that's about basically you sit down and you get feedback from the needs. And uh, that's really, even in my model of needs, I have five needs. You can check them out in, in a free book on my website. It's called uh, Forget Happiness. There's, I outlined the five needs. But the fourth one in mine is basically about the need for attunement. I call it the need for reflection. But it's sitting down and saying, how did I do today? How do I feel? Something's out of balance. Something didn't quite work there today. But the last thing I'll say is that when we're practicing that attunement, what we tend to do is we're super critical of ourselves. For first of all, well, I didn't stick to the routine. Well, you shouldn't have because it wasn't going to work permanently anyway. It needed to break down. But we criticize ourselves. We attack ourselves for not being perfect. There is no perfect system. There is no perfect self-parenting. You know, there's that book, The Good Enough Parent. Well, I advocate for being the good enough self-parent. So it's, it's, it's never a thing you perfect meeting your own needs. And a, a little bit of compassion for yourself and an acknowledgement that some days I won't do this well. I will, certainly won't do it perfectly. And I won't, I certainly will not do it perfectly all the time. So it's like, okay, instead of beating myself about the fact that I'm not going to the gym if that's one of my needs or I'm not uh, working on a project or I didn't do my assignment or I didn't learn how to speak Spanish today, whatever it might be in terms of these goals or needs that you have. Instead of beating ourselves up, it's like, okay, something was off. I wasn't quite fully attuned and that's part of how this works. It's not a bad thing. It's actually an inevitable thing. Attunement, listen to what the needs are saying and it's basically calling out for some kind of an adjustment. Okay, that's all. That's all it means. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're failing at this. It means you're engaged with the very complicated and always in flux process of figuring out what your needs are and meeting them. Now, yeah, it's, it's like we need compassion because we're not going to do it perfectly. But the good news is with attunement and more and more attunement and stillness and inviting in that presence to sort of guide you along that way, you do get better at it. You get a lot better at it. And you know, finally, I'll just say, you know, with needs, we do have needs. And uh, we have kind of two options with them. One is to repress them and pretend like they're not there, which 
isn't a lot of fun and doesn't work because you can't get rid of them. The needs don't go away. So my approach is meet them. But we meet them in relationship with the higher mind, with the higher self, which is that presence that guides us through them in meeting them. And it's also, you'll find when you bring in that presence and you cultivate that relationship with your higher self, that there's kind of less of a sort of a preoccupation on the needs and meeting them. It's a much softer, almost invisible experience when that presence is there. Yeah, it's not denying the needs, it's acknowledging them, but it's so much more gentle and less high stakes when that presence is there. So self-compassion, but optimism too, that you will get better at this. So a few thoughts there for Jessica's question uh, about meeting needs. I hope that's useful. If you want to find out more about this, um, my book, again, Forget Happiness, it's free. It's on my website. And uh, it's really, at the very least, it's a really good starting point for what is all this stuff about meeting my own needs and self-parenting. And it'll give you a good uh, introduction into how to start that and, and then develop that and get much better at it over time. Guys, thanks for being with me, as always. And uh, if you think this video might help somebody, consider sending it, to them, sending it all to them or sharing with them. And uh, it helps too if you like these videos. It uh, helps me reach more people. So that's a huge way that you can help me here. And uh, I'll leave it there for now, but I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.